Hello, this is Paranormal Girl, and today I'm going to talk about the ghosts of Alcatraz Island. With its centuries-old history from ancient Native Americans to Fort Alcatraz to military barracks, and most often known as a service as one of the toughest federal penitentiaries in the nation, it's no wonder that this place is said to be one of the most haunted in the nation. Often described as a portal to another dimension, Alcatraz is filled with the energy of those who come to the rock and seemingly never left. From its first visitors, tales and legends of the island have circulated for several centuries. In the beginning, the Native Americans believed the island to be inhabited by evil spirits. A severe punishment for violations of tribal law Indians were sometimes isolated for a period of time on the island or even banished for life to live among the evil spirits. Today, these spirits that continue to lurk in the shadows of the often fog-enshrouded island have been heard, seen and felt by both the staff and many visitors to Alcatraz. The sounds of men's voices, screams, whistles, clanging metal doors and terrifying screams are said to be heard within these historic walls, especially near the dungeon. While the island served as a federal penitentiary, a number of guards reported extraordinary experiences, including hearing the sounds of sobbing and moaning, terrible smells and reports of what they called the thing, an entity that was said to appear with glowing eyes. Other reports were made of phantom prisoners and soldiers appearing before the guards and families who lived on the island. Reportedly, even Warden Johnston, who did not believe in ghosts, once encountered the unmistakable sounds of a woman sobbing while leading a number of guests on a tour of the prison. The cries heard by not only the warden, but also the guests, were described as coming from inside the walls of the dungeon. Just as the sobbing stopped, an icy cold wind blew through the group. Since the 1940s, apparitions have been seen at the site of the now burnt-out shell of the warden's house. During a Christmas party at Warden Johnston's, several guards told the story of a ghostly man who suddenly appeared before them wearing a grey suit, brimmed cap, and sporting a mutton chop sideburns. As the startled guards stared at the apparition, the room suddenly turned very cold, and the fire in the Bell Franklin stove was extinguished. Less than a minute later, the spirit vanished. Often it's reported that on foggy nights, the old lighthouse will suddenly appear, accompanied by an eerie whistling sound and a flashing green light that makes its way slowly around the island, appearing to both guards and visitors alike. The spectacle vanishes just as suddenly as it appears. When the prison was still open, other guards told of hearing phantom cannon, cannon and gunshots, accompanied by screams, that was so real, they sent the seasoned guards to the ground, believing that prisoners had somehow escaped and obtained weapons. After taking cover, the guards would then cautiously look about to see absolutely nothing. These incidents could never be explained. Another often reported experience of the guards was the smell of smoke that often came from the deserted laundry room as if something was on fire. When they went to investigate, the black smoke was so thick it drove the guards from the room. However, just minutes later, the room was completely smoke-free. The notorious D block of the prison is said to have been, and continues to be, the most haunted block in all of the prison. While first built the same as the other cell blocks, the Bureau of Prisons appropriated additional money for more secure D block after the 1939 escape attempt in which Arthur Doc Barker was killed. 
D block, which became known as the treatment unit, comprised of 42 cells with varying de degrees of restrictions. For all prisoners incarcerated in D block, there was absolutely no contact with the general population. 36 of the cells were virtually like the others in the general population. However, inmates were not allowed to work, nor to go to the mess halls for meals. They were allowed only one visit to the recreation yard and two showers each week, and all had meals were served in their cells. Their only diversion was regarding the prison approved material. These cells all faced the Golden Gate Bridge, from which fierce cold winds often blew. One guard who worked D block was known to turn on the air conditioning to make it even colder for those confined on the block. Five of the remaining six cells in D-block were known as strip cells, but were more often referred to as the whole. Reserved for the most serious offenders of prison rules, these cells were located on the bottom tier, the coldest place in the prison, and contained only a sink, a toilet, and a low wattage light bulb that could be turned off by the guards. The prisoners' mattresses were taken away during the day or were not allowed at any time in the yard or showers, or given reading materials. Inmates could be sentenced to as many as 19 days in the hole, completely isolated and in a state of constant boredom. The last strip cell known as the Oriental was the most severe punishment the prison could assign assuring complete deprivation of all peripheral senses the dark seal and case cell contained no sink or toilet just a small hole in the floor for prisoner waste inmates were placed naked in the cell given a restricted diet and confined in a totally pitch black cold environment although a sleeping mattress was allowed at night it was removed at dawn each morning Inmates were usually only subject to this degree of punishment for only one to two days. A former guard who worked at the prison in the 1940s reported that guards often saw the ghostly presence of a man dressed in late 1800s prison attire, walking the hallway next to the strip cells. On one occasion, when an inmate was locked in the hall, he immediately began to scream that someone with glowing eyes was in there with him. The 19th century spectral prisoner had become so much of a practical joke among the guards that the convict's cries of being attacked were ignored. The inmates screamed continue well into the night when they were suddenly replaced by total silence. The following morning when the guards inspected the cell, the convict was found dead with a terrible expression on his face and noticeable handprints around his throat. The autopsy revealed that the strangulation was not self-inflicted. At the time, many believed the inmate was strangled by a guard who had finally had enough of the inmate screaming. Though an investigation was made, no one ever admitted to the strangling. Most believe that the prisoner was killed by the restless evil spirit of the 19th century prisoner who was so often seen wandering the corridors. Adding to the mystery, when the guards lined up the convicts for a daily count, one too many convicts were in the lineup. At the end of a row appeared the recently strangled convict. As everyone, guards and prisoners alike, looked on in stunned silence, the ghostly figure vanished. Today's visitors and staff often report cold spots within the hallways of D block, as well as sudden intense feelings. Cells and, tw and, and 12 and 14 D are the most active. Cell 14 D is often reported to be almost 20 degrees colder than the rest of the cells on the block. And numerous psychics have felt emotionally charged impressions in the corners of the cells where punished prisoners were known to have crouched and suffered. These cells are so eerie that it's said that some park rangers refused to go there.
when authors Richard Weiner and Nancy Osborne, authors of the book Haunted Houses, made a trip to Alcatraz, they also felt eerie feelings in cell 14D. When the pair, along with a park ranger, entered the cell, they all felt strong vibrations and tingling sensations in their hands and arms, convinced that something or someone was there with them. Osborne stated that she had never felt so much psychic energy in one spot. Co-author of the book Haunted Alcatraz, Michael Curry, also has described receiving psychic impressions when he visited cell 14D. Also experiencing tingling sensations, he tells of seeing the small man with his head shaved who told of being beaten, his legs broken by the guards and left in solitary confinement. On another occasion when renowned ghost hunter Richard Sennett and a psychic spent the night on Alcatraz, Sennett locked himself in cell 12D, where an evil spirit is said to make his home. As the steel door is closed, the ghost hunter felt icy fingers wrap around his neck, while the psychic experienced visions of the bodies of twisted and dismembered men. In cell block C, many believe that the utility passageway where convicts Bernard Coy, Joseph Kretzer and Marvin Hubbard were killed during their escape attempt in 1946, and that is haunted too. Loud, clanging noises are often heard, but stop when the door is opened, only to resume again once it's closed. Others have reported seeing the apparitions of men wearing fatigues and hearing disembodied voices at the site of the riot that left three prisoners dead. The laundry room in cell block C is also said to hold an unseen presence. When a CBS news team brought in celebrity psychic Sylvia Brown along with ex-convict Leon Thompson, Sylvia immediately encountered the unseen presence as well as strong impressions of violence in the laundry room. As she described a tall man with a bald head and small beady eyes, Leon, Leon Thompson, the ex-convict, moved forward stating, I remember Butcher, he was a hitman with the murder incorporated. Before they caught him, his name was Abby Maldowitz, which they called him Butcher. Another prisoner killed him here in the laundry room. Prison records confirm that Maldowitz was killed by another inmate in the laundry area of cell block C. In the old hospital ward, park personnel have often heard voices as well as the screams of inmates who were often secured to a table until they were calmed down. Voices are also heard in the old mess hall. When Al Capone was imprisoned at Alcatraz, he was assigned to a cell located on the outside west end of cell block B. Though the gangster was never allowed a musical instrument or radio, many have reported the sound of a phantom banjo strumming within his cell. In 1992, Alcatraz was featured on a popular television programme, Sightings, where several of the park service staff confirmed the haunting history of the prison. Among the stories told, staff were unexplained unexplainable crashing sounds, running footsteps, and earthly screams, cell doors that mysteriously closed by their own accord, moans, chains rattling, and the constant feeling of being watched. Sightings also enlisted the help of psychic investigator Peter James to help his impressions as he walked through the prison. James soon described hearing the voices of men who had been driven mad and experience of abuse, fear and pain. The tales of ghostly hauntings upon Alcatraz Island have become so frequent that the legends have become as popular as the island's long history. Seemingly, the paranormal prison is destined to live up to its popular nickname, Helcatraz. <laughs>